Cartridge-based video games as a physical item are better than disc-based video games. Try and change my mind. As someone who's collected video games pretty much my entire life, I sure have a lot to say about collecting physical discs versus collecting physical cartridges. But something that stands out is in my journey in many different game rooms I've had and phases in my collecting world, after a while I started to notice something, a pattern. I pretty much never really collected any disc-based games on a serious level. Why could that be? I want to dive a little bit deeper into that with my friend Retrobird to help make sense of all this. Even though I kind of mentioned it, I feel it's good to mention again that I'm actually going to be talking about the actual cartridge versus the actual disc. No, I'm not talking about anything that's actually on these games because that's a whole different topic. I'm not talking about what's on the disc. I'm not talking about what's on the cartridge. That's basically a video for game versus game. This is cartridge itself versus disc itself. The first reason for all of this I'm going to go with is what I'm going to call the obvious answer, because that's what it is. I'm a 36 year old dude who grew up playing video games like many of us, and a lot of us grow attachment to certain video games at certain times in your life. For me, I think the games that are the biggest standouts, the biggest heavy hitters that really stick with me as an adult are all games that I played during the 8-bit days or the 16-bit days or even maybe predating the 8-bit days. This is yours. You see, I know there's obviously a lot of great games, and again, we're not necessarily talking about games, which is why I'm getting this one out of the way. The games that I played the most that I just feel like are playing a trick in my brain to make me like cartridges better than discs is simply for the fact that a lot of the games that really stuck with me as an adult, again, not saying if they're better or not, are just the games from those days of the 8-bit days and the 16-bit days during the cartridge era. <laughs> Next point, the cartridges, they're nearly indestructible. Last time I hurled an NES cartridge off a piddly three-story parking garage. This time they were taken to the top of a 14-story building and thrown off the roof. I was seriously concerned that the plastic might shatter upon contact with the cold pavement. Instead, the plastic casing for the Super Nintendo cartridge was broken, but not irreparable, and the circuit board had popped out. And the Genesis cartridge was found in one piece with just a few scratches. This is a huge point for collectors. Well, at least a collector like me. I am all about the thrift and the hunt and finding games. I like finding things and video games and collectibles in places that most people don't like to look. And with that, a lot of times when I'm out collecting, I'm looking in places that simply a disc game would not survive. I'm talking at the bottom of cardboard boxes with endless amounts of junk on top of them, at the bottom of these trash bags. And if you've ever been to a swap meet or a flea market or a car boot early, you'll see that a lot of these vendors, unless they're specialized in selling video games or whatnot, they grab their stuff and they throw them off the trucks. Plain and simply, cartridges will last discs, they won't. I have almost never found a cartridge in my entire life that once I got home, it ended up not working. These things work almost every time right off the bat, or maybe I've just had good luck, but I'm speaking to my personal experience. I know we can talk about cleaning and resurfacing, but I'll save that for another point. I mean, these cartridges, you can drop them, you can punch them, heck, you can get in a fight with them, you can call them names, and they will take almost no damage at all. I just thought of something that nobody likes, loading screens in video games. We retro gamers don't have time for that junk. We want to get right into the action. We're not into waiting around through giant tutorials and long cutscenes. We want to get right into that gameplay. And lucky for us, cartridges say, get that loading nonsense out of my face, often having little to no loading at all. And besides reduced loading, the more simple technology used with cartridge 
Switch-based games and consoles just seems to provide a more reliable experience. I feel like my cartridge-based consoles will never die on me. In fact, I'll probably die on them before they die on me, which is convenient because I plan on playing my consoles until I'm dead. Because cartridge-based consoles have less moving parts inside of them, it just feels like there's less things that could potentially break. Every time I turn on a disc-based console, the noises it makes just kind of puts me on edge. Have you ever fired up a Dreamcast before? It sounds like somebody just started a jet engine. In fact, quick little story for you, I was playing Dreamcast one summer with my cousin. This was back when the Dreamcast was current, and we played that Dreamcast all weekend long, to the point where his parents said, all right, no more Dreamcast, you've played that thing way too much. So what did we do? We waited until they went to bed, and then we thought, okay, now's our chance to play some Dreamcast while they're asleep. Well, we turned that Dreamcast on, and needless to say, our cover was blown. But a cartridge-based console would never do that. You never hear a peep out of these things. Oh, actually, I love yeah, I just heard it say, I love you, and needless to say, the feeling is mutual. And last but not least, when it comes to functionality, I would argue that what makes a game possibly more functional than anything else is being a good game worth playing. And lucky for us, a lot of our favorite games of all time are on cartridges, so we just equate cartridges with the games that we love. And how can you argue with that? I'm now going to circle back a little bit into what I was talking about before, but leading into this point, and that is cleaning and repurposing them. Again, when you're game hunting and looking for things in the wild, most of the time, CD or disc-based games, they're going to be scratched. In a lot of cases, yes, you can actually buff them out or clean them real lightly by hand. But in many cases, these things are beyond repairable. And if they aren't, you have to buy a machine to do the job or pay someone that has a decent machine to do the job. But with cartridge-based video games, almost every time you can grab a Q-tip, some magic potion of your choice, douse it on there and clean it up, and that thing will fire up almost always. I have never not had luck with this. So when it comes to cleaning them or repurposing them or getting them to really work or in working viable condition, yeah, cartridge is gonna take it all the way. CDs, when they're scratched, especially if it's deep, it's way more work and a lot of times can't even be reversed. The next one, which does seem a little silly, but it's important to me as a collector, they're better to hold. Now I know this sounds kind of silly, but it's true. I'm also gonna spare you all the long conversation that we've all had a hundred times on this channel and every other retro channel to where we know boxes came with so much more stuff back in the day. It came with more pamphlets, more booklets. There was more to it. And that disc-based video games in these cheap little containers were basically the beginning of the end with giving us almost nothing of actual value physically. It's really stupid to be honest. But I'm talking from a collecting standpoint. Let's just look at the actual game cart or game disc itself. Honestly, who do you know or have you ever found somebody that displays their loose discs and it looks good or looks presentable? I'm sure it's out there, but almost nobody does it. I've always felt like cartridges stand better on their own compared to disc games in a literal sense. Sure, but let's focus in on the artwork here. Biggest thing that pops out? Well, the cartridge actually has artwork on it. Whereas the disc game, well, they tend to take more of a business first approach. They'll usually tell you that name of the game, but I wouldn't get your hopes up for much more than that. Where a cartridge stands loud and proud by itself, a disc game just feels like it was never intended to be away from its case and manual. Like a child that's lost its parents, scared and vulnerable, it doesn't know what to do, scratches lurking around every corner. Plus, being the collectors that a lot of us are and being so used to just getting 
absolutely hammered by the high prices that retro games can go for, it's nice to at least have the option of just getting a cartridge by itself since it will look good on its own and still be protected. I mean, who the heck can proudly display loose discs? It's funny when you collect loose carts, it's like a total thing and even a thing of pride. In fact, many collectors, and I'd say most collectors, actually collect cartridges loose. They just look good and they make sense collected loose. Also, I don't know about you, but when I'm not playing my games, something I do like to do from time to time is stare at my games. And the thing about staring is that the more interesting what you're staring at is, the more satisfying the stare. Well, let's call cartridges a starer's delight because they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. I mean, a disc is a disc, but a cartridge could be oh so many different things. Depending on the console, you have have a unique, specific, special cartridge that just gives more character to that specific cartridge in relation to the console that it's played on. So whether it be the artwork itself or the different shapes and sizes that cartridges come in, when you've got them all on display, you've got yourself a nice chunk of video gaming goodness to look at. But when you collect discs, the game pretty much feels like, ew. What, why are they, why, what, what do you do with these when they're loose? Displaying cartridges just look nice, plain and simply. They look nice anywhere. They stand up, they don't fall down, they have color to them. They look great, but collecting discs loose is just, ew. Who even does that? Without the case, it almost doesn't even feel like you actually have a game. Every time I grab a disc, I just want to throw it like it's a Frisbee, regardless of what it is. Again, going off my previous point, and a lot of people won't like this, even when I have the cases for disc-based games, I still don't like them. Yeah, so even when you have a case for discs, they just feel so lame. How do I even say it? Plastic cases for sure keep my game safer than cardboard. Let me make that very clear. I'm definitely saying disc-based games have better cases, well, for preserving the games. I mean, the Genesis has good ones too. But yeah, disc-based stuff has the better plastic casings, for sure. But I always just feel like I'm holding like some cheap DVD case or something. Again, it keeps my actual game safe, but the case itself is just bland. I'd way rather have a Genesis case. And as far as the jewel cases don't even make me laugh, like for the Dreamcast or PS1 games, I have never not broken one of those in my entire life. I'm aware that this was a really shallow answer and point here, but honestly, I'd way rather take a beat up old broken NES video game box than a clean condition PS2 box or case or whatever you want to call it. They do nothing for me. I feel like I'm holding no value. Again, and as a collector, that's the point of this video. This next one is very safe to say that many people will agree on this one. Disc rot, that's a big thing. But I don't wanna jump into it and that's for one simple reason. This video, I wanna make sure that I'm speaking to what I know and I've experienced. For me in my life, I've never experienced any sort of disc rot and I've never experienced any sort of rotting or decay within a cartridge as well. So this conversation, although it exists, I wouldn't be in a good place to speak about it because I can't speak for it from any personal happenings in my life. I wish politicians thought that way, imagine. Don't speak on something you've actually never experienced. For my closing statement, I definitely want to say that your opinion is going to be what's fact for you. And that's the reality with collecting. Collecting in itself is such a weird, unique thing because Collecting is important, but all in the certain eye of the beholder. Because for some, holding an actual physical item may mean nothing to you. There's many people that could probably pick up an NES game and hold the cartridge and say, this means nothing. And they might get a thrill literally from holding a disc of a video game that they played at a certain time in their life. It doesn't even mean it has to be nostalgic, but a certain reason or something in their brain triggers it as this is what I want to hold. This is better to me. So for me, in my personal life, yeah, disc-based stuff doesn't really do it for me. When it comes to collecting, I've always gravitated towards cartridges, and that's even from way back in the day. 
without even realizing it, without really making a reason for collecting for anything specific, I've just realized I've always collected cartridge-based stuff. Always. And that's the way I like it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I normally would never do something like this, but make sure you check out Retrobird. This dude is one of my favorite dudes on YouTube. I reached out to him like, we gotta do this video together. I love his channel. I think you'll love it too. Really like him. Really, really like him. Hmm. He's a good boy. He's not a dog.